Well, the point of power command is map. This is part three of the um, four-stroke cylinder head uh, series, and uh, what we've done is cut this section of the head away with the uh, old scrap Subaru head we have, and um, also all the components inside. So what I'll do is, um, it is a bit delicate. It does keep wanting to fall apart. So I'm just going to shift it so you can see it better. Uh, better. So as you can see where our um, cross-sectional cut of this cylinder head gives you a full appreciation of um, how complex the, well one the casting is but number two is how complex the design is. So as you can see um, I've put one valve in but I've also to a certain degree um, cross-sectioned a lot of parts of the, uh, the actual valve system so this is the um, tap it, I've, uh, this is the valve guide here and then the valve seat, so there's one side of it there, one side of it there and even the exhaust side like so. So this gives you an appreciation um, and a visual example of what these components look like because at the end of the day you're just stacking them on etc. So you can see and we'll, we'll start from the bottom. So the valve seat, and we'll pull out the exhaust valve seat like so. The valve seat, basically what they do is they precisely bore out the valve seat and they machine the uh, valve guide passage and the tappet passage all from different ends to give this um, to ensure that it's completely aligned then the um, valve seat, and what I'll do is I'll colour in the end so you can see the shape of it a bit clearer because it's just a lot of aluminium and steel and it all looks the same as you can see it has a uh, you can see that it has a sweep back angle and just at the end you can hardly see it there's a 45 degree here just here before it goes back out to a um, less acute angle put it that way so basically these seats are kind of designed with a three angle cut in them um, from the factory and these seats are an interference fit which means this hole it's too small for the seat to go into and they freeze these with liquid nitrogen to make the steel contract and then they press them in like so and they are a bugger to get out so with it replaced inside the uh, cylinder head you can see now it's been highlighted um, how the, it's just basically got a squared shoulder back that's brilliant like I say, they're a bugger to get out, but as soon as you get them out, they'll bloody stay in. Um, so, moving up, we have the ports. So this is your inlet port, and this is your exhaust port. And as you can see, let me get a pointer out again. As you can see, this is a parting line for the casting there. This rough, gruff nut section. And you can actually even see on the inlet valve here, this little valve here. This is where it's been machined for the valve seat um, or the port size but just prior to the valve seat and there's a little lip there you can see this line in the casting and that's kind of what you have to grind out when you do port jobs etc. So as you can see the inlet port is highlighted and uh, one of the key considerations of when designing an inlet port is that the inlet port has to um, be as fast flowing and as smooth flowing as possible. So what they kind of try and do is make sure there's this gradual bend. You'd love to have it straight down, but there's a valve in the way. Now, more modern engines, I seriously look to their engines, kind of have a pot at this angle, they move the valve nearly vertical as much as, pot, as, much as they can, because they want the air just to flow in as, as smooth as possible. So, when people do um, port jobs etc 
this area at the bottom, you'd call it the floor of the port, is, is not where you want to touch. If anything, you want to radius the top more. But as you can see with this, we have this area here. This area is the water jacket. So this is where the water flows and we've just kind of come across, uh, we've cut across a section where it comes out and loops back round. Um, but there's not much meat here to chew into and there's not much meat here. So the port job you can kind of do on this is very, very minor. Um, because at the end of the day Subaru has done a pretty good port design in the first place. Um, you can see the, the bridge here and the other inlet port and basically it's just a, a mirror image of this one. Um, there's a relief cut in the top here for the injector to nose down into and uh, so it has access to um, the back of both valves. So now we can look at the exhaust port which is here and because of the nature of the way a Subaru is manufactured there is only two um, the two ports branch together and then go towards the centre line of the head so this has got these are quite um, what do you say quite straight where the exhaust port bends off at an angle so that's the centre line of the exhaust port just because of the way they want to collect and keep the heat in one area while the inlet ports are pretty much straight like so. You can see that there's this massive cavity here and this massive cavity as you can see goes into the recesses of where the uh, valves sit and this cavity is on this side and not this side simply because it's great because the port design you can shift it this way but also this is the oil run back so this is the drain and the way this engine sits is this is facing the sky and this is facing the floor so this is the bottom of the engine so all the oil that circulated around and sent to the head then drains back due to gravity down here and into back into the cylinders and then back into the well they go under the cylinders and back into the sump so that's what this massive cavity here is so, sticking with uh, the valve, etc, we have the valve, the valve guard, which is this, this section here. And the valve guards are made out of hardened steel, and they, I'm sorry, they're not hardened steel, they're just a very good alloy steel. But the valve, the valve guides, you could, they are a bearing surface, they're designed to wear and be replaceable because this is an aluminium head. Um, you've got a steel, a steel, a hardened steel valve going up and down, up and down, up and down, it's going to wear, so you can't have it straight into the aluminium block, you either have a cast iron or a sexy alloy steel valve guide. So that valve guide lines up the valve stem, also gives it um, support etc and like I say it is a bearing surface then you have your valve seat which is here which I know we've gone through all this before there's your valve seat here's your spring there's your valve return and your collets are in there and then this is your tappet and as you can see your tappet is a thick section on top and an even thicker section in the centre to press against the valve tip as you see there's clearance all the way around and it quite snugly fits around the valve spring and the valve retainer etc and then that sits in a machine pocket which is this machine pocket so this can slide up and down here but there's enough clearance between the two for oil to sit and the tappet basically what the tappet is for is you have a camshaft that's rotating and it's hit, striking the tappet from just say from left to right so that's causing the tappet to rock now if it was directly onto the end of the valves this also causes the valves to rock which means that it wears on the inside it never sits perfectly um, perpendicular to the valve, sur valve seat surface so you get an excess of wear all and all the rest of it so what the tappet does is the tappet is there to take out because it can't move because it's restricted by this pocket it takes out the side to side rocking and basically only accepts the linear motion 
of, of the, what's wanted out of the can. So you're taking rotational motion and you turn it into linear motion on the valves. So that's what the tappets for. These are hard as nuts of tappets. It was an absolute bitch to cut through that. But um, you can kind of see the whole setup, and then you've got this pocket here. All these little weird little pockets. These are just part of the castings, etc. And if you cut it at a certain angle, it kind of looks like this. But this is all the drain back. So this all drains around where this, this is the spark plug hole in here. This comes all the way out of the bottom, as you can see. Um, your water jacket, and then you have these holes here. Now these holes, and you can see one better than the other. These holes are oil feed holes, so they are drilled all the way through, blanked off at one side, and have an oil pipe on the other side. And oil goes down both of these like cam galleries, if you want to call it that. And as you can see on this one, it's been drilled. So you have this section here where it's been drilled. And what this does is the oil pressure squirts out and applies oil to the outside surface of the tappet because this is one of the main rubbing surfaces. So this has, in a sense, a bit like um, a piston where the uh, side of the rings, etc., and the cylinder wall need to be oiled, and that's what this hole does. And you can actually see how it's been drilled through. It's been drilled through at just the right angle. Just there, just where they can get in before hitting here. So that must have been one hell of a thin, long drill bit just to get in there. And each one, this one comes from this side as well. So all the rest of them come from this side and then these ones. So it all comes from the same side. So the camshafts ride in um, these half cap recesses here. And then you have, where do I put it? You have cam caps or camshaft bearing caps that sit there like that so these bolt on and these have the centre line of the camshaft and the camshaft has a um, machined a turned surface on it that runs on here there's also I'll try and find some, I don't know if you can see but I don't really want to move a bit there's also a hole there like so and if you can see that that's actually come through this hole so that's another drilled hole. Um, again, this oil feed, uh, pressurised oil, is squirted up these holes and this oils these bearings. And then whatever, it's a constant feed, so the clearance with these two is constantly pissing out oil, which is a good thing because it pisses out oil on top of the tappet where the camshaft is making contact, so there's oil between the camshaft and the tappet. And like I said, all excess goes into the bottom of the casting in here and then ends up draining back. So there's this constant cycle. You can see the other ones here. Which is weird. Because that one goes straight down. Uh -huh. So what there is on this side is that there's a um, Allen key screw, uh, Allen key grub screw here. And there's a passage drilled through. So this passage will drill through to this gallery. Because there's a gallery block in the middle. And then these drill straight down like so. So because this because this gallery is on this side and this gallery is on the same side, these can be drilled down straight away. These can't be, they'd have to be drilled down here, but that's not where it lives. Because there's no oil passage here. They've had to make a bridged oil passage drill through here. You can just see it there. So there's a part of the casting that goes right under here. That's drilled through, and then this is drilled through, and this is blocked off. So that's how these bear in there. That's how that camshaft, the exhaust camshaft on that side, receives oil. But as you can see, it's a pretty complex, compact especially. We've only got this side. When you go 3D and look along, there's... Um, there's a lot to be designed, it's quite an intensive casting. Um, these gaps here, these are the um, water jackets, so these flow and all the rest of them, they'll be cause. And um, right, so the next thing I want to do is, well, uh, I'll set it up and then I'll bring you back, which is basically just set a camshaft on here so you can kind of see the action, etc. And if I can hold it all in place, I'll find something to glue it, I'll try and turn the camshaft so you can actually see the valve working. So here we have the other side of the slice off, so you can kind of see different things 
from this side. So because of the way I had to cut it, you can just make out where the valve guide where the valve guides go. You can still see where the um, tappet recesses go, etc. You can see less of the exhaust port, and like I say, this gruff nutty part in line. You can see the weird little exhaust port. But what you can see here is that the shape of the pent roof combustion chamber. And what you will notice is it's offset. And this is because the exhaust the inlet valve is bigger than the exhaust valve. So you can see it's a pent roof, but it's, this isn't the middle. The middle's probably over here somewhere. Um, you can also see the water passage, how the oil runs. So, like I say, you have all these galleries pumping oil, la da da da, etc. And what they do is they run down here behind this section, because this is only a thin walled section. Like, literally, I can stick my finger behind it. And then it runs down here, and you can see how it just runs down. So, all the oil is passed back down to the engine. So again, the orientation will be that way within the engine, like so. So you can see now all of a sudden how the oil, even at its highest spot, it's going to all run down, it's all going to run down, it's going to run down to this section. And um, that's how the uh, oil galleries work. You can see the oil gallery passes through there, you can see the oil gallery passes through there, and I can stick this through you can see. So this end on the gallery has a plug here, a little grub screw, screw plug, and this has a grub screw plug here. This is a core plug for the water jacket, so basically that's just buttoned off. And you can see all these little other ports, etc, for all these oil pipes and stuff to try and pass the oil around. The next bits we have is, you can see where the two head bolts go. And just on this particular section, there isn't just two. Um, you can see all the um, the other top cover, the rocker cover, and etc. And then you can see these oil grooves here, which are also drilled into the oil passage. Where these have to be drilled at an angle because there's nothing under here. Um, and this this is where the oil seal lives, etc. And the oil seal here on the end of the camshaft before you get to the pulleys on the front. So you can see where the oil comes out, and as this is all spinning, it's all passed. Um, onto this bearing surface again for the uh, camshaft to sit. So that's just a quick sneaky peeky look at the other side. You can see a bit more of like I say you can see a bit more of how the architecture of the uh, head works.